So we have been living in the Honda a little bit over a month now, which means that we have something kind of resembling a routine going on as far as how we set up the car anyway. So that is what I'm going to show y'all, how we set up the car with all of our stuff in it. And that, that was a little chipmunk. And also just a quick shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so first you're gonna see the car in drive mode. And this is when the car looks the most intimidating because it's literally got all of our stuff in there and it makes you kind of go, wow, how could that possibly work? There's so much stuff crammed in there. But really, in some crazy way, it totally does. Y'all check out this really hungry little chipmunk. Look at all the stuff he's already eaten. He is like having a feast right now. Oh, he's so cute. Look at his little face. All right, so here we go. Here is the car when it is in drive mode or just on a typical drive day when we're going. We got, this is where literally all of the stuff that we have with us just in the car, like if we're traveling to a different place or whatever. So the front has kind of got whatever in it, but the back is crammed. So there's stuff in the trunk. On the other side, we've got the two crash pads and then Again, more stuff just all up in there. Here's from the front. This is like what you would see. So that is the car with all of the things in it. And there are some nights, like for example, if we stay at Walmart or if for whatever reason, like we just need to be completely self-contained and keep everything in the vehicle. We can, even when we set the bed up to sleep, we can set up the bed by pushing these seats forward and then this wood piece, um, unfolding and we can keep these crash pads in this front section it's a really really tight fit but it is possible and i can show that at a later time like when we actually are forced to do it because i really don't want to set that up right now because it's actually kind of painful anyways the point is is that it's possible and this is the car when it is in drive mode so in the event that the crash pads can come out of the car which has proven to be more often than not they go one of two places on the sunroof where well let me show you what's going on there before i explain the crash pads so this is some just some black fabric it is like some power mesh oh no we just got it at a fabric store and We'll put this over the sunroof. Here's what that looks like when it's all done. So we've got a nice little sunroof cover to keep the bugs out and we can still crack this for ventilation. So anyways, putting these slightly on top of the sunroof to cover that part has really helped when it's raining or snowing. And then we've got this inflatable pool that we'll put over the crash pads, which again is really awesome when it is raining or snowing because it prevents the crash pads from getting wet and then it prevents water from seeping through our um, sunroof area while we're sleeping and the second place they could potentially go is in this tent if we are posted up a little bit more the way we are right now so we specifically got this tent to use as a space saver at free campgrounds it's just super helpful to be able to place the tent down and save our spot while we head into town and go get groceries or do errands or any kind of gather supplies whatever we need to do but we have the tent to leave so we know that like our, our spot won't get taken in free campgrounds or like first come first serve areas. And it's also really awesome for a dual purpose, which is storing the crash pads and then sometimes the water. And next, I'm gonna show you guys bed mode. That is when everything is just set up and we are ready to go to sleep. But I'm also gonna show you kind of uh, what it entails, sorry, I've cut on my arm. Um, what it entails to kind of get that ready that whole process i'm not going to explain it because it's just moving stuff from one place to another but i will show you kind of a quick i'll just be ah there's a wasp push my head off so there we have it this is what it looks like when we are in bed mode nice and spacious plenty of room for your legs and your feet and to lay down all of the stuff that was in the back and all of the stuff that was in the trunk just gets a new home transferred in the front section so it looks like that whole process might seem very tedious but even with this wood bed platform in the Honda Civic, we've still managed to average about 35 miles per gallon. In case you wanted to doubt me. So really it's just kind of give and take, although it might be a little, 
you know, a process to set everything up. The fact that we've been getting 35 miles per gallon is amazing because in comparison, and I would never take the van on the route that we've taken because we've traveled so fast and such long distances or far distances, but if I had taken the van in comparison for price, I would have saved about $800. So kind of amazing. So fun fact, all of the wood that we used for the Honda bed is wood that was left over from the van build. So we just have this wood platform, we have a blanket, and then we decided to go with air up sleeping pads. So we each have one of these. And then also there's a few places that we like to go where you're not allowed to sleep in your vehicle. So you have to sleep in a tent. So these will be a good dual purpose piece of gear. Is that a fly? And each of these pads is 20 by 72 and we have enough space on this platform to fit two of them side by side. And then there is still a decent amount of space in the middle. Okay, getting in here might seem kind of cramped, but it's actually pretty comfortable. So when you get in the bed and you're sitting, you can't sit up right in the middle, but if you scoot back and you put your head in the sunroof, then I can sit up upright this way. And then Jonathan is 6'2", and he can sit up upright if he puts his head in the sunroof also. So there is a decent amount of space to chill back here and you are able to sit. I was a little skeptical about the layout because having a bed basically meant that we do not have quick access to the front seats like in case of an emergency or something but we weighed the pros and cons and just decided that we would try and compensate in other areas as far as safety goes so that we could have this bed set up. As far as water goes, in two seven gallon containers, we carry a total of 14 gallons of water. We fill both when we are going to be completely off grid and then we only fill one if we're gonna be in an area that has easy access to water. And there are these window covers, which I made for two reasons. One, stealth slash privacy, and then two, insulation. So these are just reflectix cut out to fit the shape of the window with black fabric sewed to one side and in the past I made window covers for the van um, and I used spray adhesive rather than sewing the black fabric and it was faster but in the direct sunlight you could really smell the adhesive so that's why I didn't do that for these. So whether it be hot or cold these reflectix window covers help regulate the temperature within the vehicle and this is especially helpful during very very cold nights and to attach them to the windows we didn't use velcro or magnets with these you just push them in and they stay. When they're in the windows they provide a ton of privacy and then at night we can be inside with the lights on and from the outside it is not not noticeable like check out what it looks like at night we can have the lights on super super bright inside and then a closed door so then for the lights we don't use the car lights because we don't want to drain the battery so we use these lucy inflatable solar lights we put them on the dash or on top of the car or anywhere outside really <laughs> during the day so that they can charge and then at night we have plenty of options for light. We also have our headlamps and lastly if we really need for light we could use our phones. And that leads us to power so we're able to keep our phones and all other devices charged such as laptops and cameras etc with this Jackery portable power station accompanied by a 100 watt solar panel and then of course the occasional long day of work at a coffee shop or McDonald's. And then lastly, we've got chill mode. So as you can see, there's plenty of space up there to sit and do whatever we need to do. And then all of this stuff is easily accessible. We don't have to really struggle to get to anything. It's all there. And the difference between this and like drive mode or whatever is the fact that normally a lot of this stuff would kind of be in the trunk area. So this, like our bed is folded in half and all we have to do is unfold that once we move all the stuff. So nothing has to chill back here when it's in chill mode um, because the crash pads are not in there. That's when the crash pads will either be on the roof or they'll be in this tent or sometimes they'll just be hanging out outside. So this is what our chill setup looks like we've got the um, solar panel on the roof you can see that the tent and yeah the stuff in the car so the main thing with chill mode just being the fact that we can easily access all of our belongings and then still sit up front and do work or whatever it is we need to do so it might look like living in a honda is a little hard to manage but you know it's not hard to manage squarespace squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create their websites squarespace allows you to link your various social media accounts to your website so you can post simultaneously to all accounts 
and site management has never been easier as Squarespace allows you to edit your posts and comments on the go using their mobile app. So if you're interested, you can go to squarespace.com slash Hobo Alley to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing how the Honda is set up in various circumstances and I will see you next time.